To God be the glory. I'm a product of grace and I'm a product of favor. I have seen hate. I have witnessed envy at its deepest end. I have witnessed rejection. While growing up, I had experienced fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what tomorrow holds. But I still stand. And I hope with this little good old day story of mine, few lessons will be learnt. My name is Ufoma Glory Meruwa Tietie. Here you have it. I was born in the city of Sapele, Delta State. My parents, Samuel Agboju and Christiana Tietie, were both robos. Dad had been a pastor long before I was born. And mother, one of those nurses trained by whites at the Sacred Heart Hospital, Abel Kuta. My dad was a roving pastor traveling and evangelizing around the world. He might be in Ghana in a moment, and then we'll hear he's in Holland again. So I never really grew up for long with him in the house. Mom too, a trained nurse, was at a point being transferred from one hospital to another. So I grew up early, learning to be independent. Dad died 11 years ago at the ripe age of 81 while mom died at the age of 78. You see, <laughs> I am an orphan now. <laughs> I was born the second child and the first girl of four children. I lost my brother, who was the first child at the age of 18, and also lost the last child, which was a girl, at the age of um, 15, leaving just the two of us in the middle, my immediate younger sister and my humble self. Growing up was mixed with fun and self-induced labor. Of course, you can't have parents like mine who were always posted from one place to the other and not grow up fast. I learned to do things for myself so early in life. I am almost seven years older than the girl after me, so I was more or less like a small mommy to her and her junior sister, now late though. While my mom was away to work, I was the one taking care of them, and there was no need to hire a maid. I was the in-house maid. <laughs> I grew up to bear responsibilities very early. Life was not rosy while growing up, so I devised a means of augmenting family income early in life. My parents had moved into Benin, where I started my primary education at Asoro Primary School, also known as St. Matthew's Primary School, Benin City. There was this particular neighbor who lived two houses away from ours. They used to sell what we called milk ice cream then. We also had a fridge that was idle and unproductive, so to speak. So, I chose to start selling ice water since I didn't have the capital to go into milk ice cream selling. I knew my mother would not approve of it, so whenever she goes to work, I will run to go and sell ice water on Ring Road, Benin, from the ice block I made overnight. Even when my mother discovered, surprisingly, she wasn't angry. I told her I loved to do it, and eventually, she allowed me. From there, I graduated into selling milk ice cream. I discovered where they were selling the colorings of the ice cream in Oba Market, Benin. And as young as I was then, I would go all the way to go and buy the ingredients for making my ice cream. Before you know it, I started selling minerals as well. Hmm. Great memories of an industrious child. At this period, mother too was transferred out of Benin. She took along with her the two younger children and invited my grandmother over to take care of my brother and I. Grandmother discovered that trading flair in me and she maximized the opportunity. I started selling for grandma whatever was in season, from corn to mango to banana to ice cream, which we call otien, or other fruits, combining it with my studies. As a matter of fact, when I was in primary five, I just saw a group of people filing into a secondary school to write common entrance examination for admission into the school. I followed them, wrote the exams, and passed. 
it was my mother. Trust those good old days mothers who would always want their children to get to primary six and obtain what we call G2 primary school living certificate then. Who insisted I must be withdrawn from school to complete my primary education. And in those days, you dare not go against your parents' wish, lest you are classified as recalcitrant. So, I went back to my primary school to complete primary six. All the while, I had fun getting involved in cultural dancing. I was in the Edo cultural dance troupe from primary three to primary six. I also got involved in children's parades and other extracurricular activities in school. I attended three different secondary schools from St. Mara Goretti Girls College, Benin City, which was referred to also as Eden Girls, to Ekma, and then finally to Ovu Grammar School, which was also a Catholic school. I got admission to Auchi Polytechnic. But just as I was resuming, hmm, because of the sad way my brother died, because he went to play football and never came back. My mother was so traumatized. She felt something bad could happen to me. And people also, a lot of family members were having dreams and seeing that my enemy died. So I was withdrawn from school. I was withdrawn as an accounting student in Aochi after forfeiting admission to study Ecostat in Ekboma University. Now, I moved down to Lagos with an uncle who promised to help out. I started working with UBA in Lagos in 1988 with a monthly salary of 200 naira with the intention of starting accounting professional exams. But by stroke of luck, I was then at Jazz Basin to look for a friend. I got into singing through Mike Apple, who was a saxophonist then. And he thought that I had a great voice and so I was invited to start singing. That was how I ended up being a singer, a voiceover artist, a script writer, and eventually a studio engineer. Hmm. I was earning a whopping sum of 300 naira per session as against 200 naira per month salary in the banking sector. I pursued my career in music and became a sound engineer at Clink Studios under the tutelage of Sir Kingsley Ogoro. I was hungry to learn. I had the opportunity to be at OGBC, to be trained as a journalist. But Mr. Femi Shoulu advised that I would be better off doing what I'm doing now. He told me, he said, this sound engineering that you are talking about, I think you should go for it because we don't have women doing it. You have experience, you can sing, you are a good sound engineer and a script writer. You can produce but you don't have any paper backing. I think you should go to school. So while I was doing that, I got an admission to do diploma in Unilag. And after that, I was in Lagos State University and backed a degree in mass communication. And here we are today. Mm. As a child, I was too busy to hold anything to heart. I was trained to always say it as it is, though that position sometimes gets one in trouble. <laughs> Even now, try but it won't deter me from that age-long value of being resolute in my convictions on what is right and what is wrong and always defending my positions. Now, I am a mentor. I share my stories for the upcoming ones to learn, including the good, the bad, and the ugly. To our youths, I say, education is non-negotiable. It broadens your sights. It gives you the extra height to see far. I urge the upcoming ones not to joke with every opportunity to broaden their views and knowledge. It is the greatest wealth you can ever desire. Then work. Stop relying on others. If anyone helps you, it is a privilege. Don't see it as your right. Lower your sense of entitlement. Don't become a burden. To parents, if there is something your child loves to do, guide them. Push them to be the best in that area. When I wanted to be selling water on the streets, my mom said to me, what will people say? But she later let go. Did she regret it? No. That action of my mother 
actually brought out the best in me and taught me to be streetwise. Parents, let us be the example our children want to see. A lot of people are talking without walking the talk. Let us walk the talk so that when they see us, they will gladly follow. The future will only be guaranteed if they have good examples to follow. We can reenact those great good old days of family values. Those days when what matters to us most as being taught by our parents and guardians were kindness, self-compassion, integrity, responsibility, mutual respect, honesty, flexibility, and fairness. Days when the values of hard work was placed well and above luck and reaping where you did not sow. I'm an ardent believer in a great Nigeria, but our leaders must be able to borrow a leaf from the vibes of the past to fashion out a tomorrow that will be greater. Our children certainly deserve a better and brighter future. We can make it happen by making sure from our own little space we do our bits. To this end, I therefore join Sir Shemo Ray Badejo in this patriotic drive towards a better and brighter tomorrow, not only for our youths, but for ourselves too. Thank you. <laughs>